now that we are well into uh, you know our our cycles of sales and and uh, implementations uh, you know i i am surprised that most of our clients are actually large companies uh, you know there are there are billion dollar corporations with all the tools wow. and then uh, <laughs> I, you know i ask myself after these zoom calls about you are a billion dollar company why are you talking to me right uh, and then uh, it looks like they also struggle with the same roi calculations like they when they open up the excel sheet and they put in the uh, you know license uh, fee yeah. <laughs> the number of rows that qualify or come in green is hard, you know very very few uh, and they are, they themselves are also looking at at uh, open source Ashish, welcome to the Ivy podcast. Thank you so much for having this conversation with me today. Thank you so much, Courtney, for having me over. Can you please tell everybody a little bit about your background and also about OpenBots? Sure. I am Ashish Nangla. I am the CTO and co-founder for OpenBots Inc. OpenBots is essentially uh, an RPA open source RPA tool. Uh, it's now available in the market. We have we, have, we launched in about November, uh, early November. Um, myself, I have been in you know IT IT services and IT consulting for a long, long time, about uh, 25 years now. Uh, did this uh, you know did gigs for large insurance companies, financial services, banks, um, you know high level architecture uh, in terms of uh, creating uh, solutions, as well as you know did a lot of you know in the later years I started doing a lot of emerging tech, especially around AI, uh, you know RPA. Or, IoT, a uh, whole bunch of new technologies that that started breaking ground and uh, you know looked very promising. They're kind of starting to become mainstream now. Uh, RPA was definitely one of them. Uh, RPA was uh, you know the early contender and looked like uh, had you know better uh, ROI for most of the other results and more definite business cases and use cases uh, for us. Uh, you know we started implementing RPA and. Um, you know, earlier we did have to explain what RPA was and things, but uh, at the end, RPA took off very well. Uh, it was understood by business community uh, better, and uh, they started uh, appreciating what RPA can do. And I, you know, uh, I thought this could become a business by itself and not just part of, you know, some services and independent thing uh, altogether. Um, so you yeah. and I are passionate about RPA. Um, and, and we deal with it every day, you know, according to Gartner, uh, global RPA revenue is projected to reach $1.89 billion in, yeah. in this year in 2021. And that's an increase of almost 20% over, over 2020. Um, and the growth rate is expected to continue to double, um, by double digits into 2024, yeah. Yeah. despite this, and despite you and I living and breathing this every day, um, there are still, you know, companies out there that are that are exploring this technology and haven't really leveraged it yet. So maybe can you describe RPA and also some of the benefits it can bring to an organization? Absolutely. I mean, RPA, uh, you know, when we describe RPA or rather when we started this business, how I described this to my RP, uh, to my wife was RPA is what, you know, I think my wife wants IT to be. <laughs> it's <laughs> it true. Be straightforward. It has to be simple. It has to be fast to implement. You cannot be coding the same thing again and again. <laughs> and you know, a few days ago, or like when we started Open Bots, and uh, slightly a few days before that, she saw me coding and said, "You are doing the same thing that you were doing 20 years ago. <laughs> you know, these brackets and these semicolons look the same." And I actually agreed with her that, you know, technology has not improved substantially to make things better. And uh, RPA is exactly that, right? RPA is the answer to that. Uh, you know, people may look at it from different views. They can th think of it as tactical. Somebody can think of it as uh, strategic, but that is essentially what we uh, set out to be, uh, you know, what I call as the unfulfilled promise of IT. Uh, we were supposed to do things really, really fast and turn around uh, applications and make business better. And RPA is going to do that. RPA is making that 
uh, change by making sure that you know all the human effort that goes into uh, operating a business can can be automated, right? Can be so anything that needs to be uh, moved around uh, on applications, data being entered, data being extracted. So these are you know not only really repetitive work. I I wanted to say that some time ago that it's just repetitive work, but that's not true anymore. So business processes trying to get uh, you know more automated and and involve humans in the loop when only. Uh, you know, a decision needs to be made or an important information needs to be con conveyed, something needs to be reviewed, uh, you know, make sure you have not missed out, put the decimal in the wrong place in a check amount and those kind of things, right? right. So that's where thing, uh, they come in. Um, RPA, um, you know, earlier was thought of as a fringe uh, thing out and, and, and rogue elements of an organization trying to write, you know, overcomplicated macros. Uh, but that's not true anymore. You know, the, there is a good venture of uh, you know IT tools that have come up, and and everybody has started em embracing that now. So we see uh, you know RPA adoption. There is hardly uh, you know any CFO anymore who does not know what RPA is. There might be CIOs that don't know what it is, <laughs> but I'm definitely sure CFOs know know what that is, and it's essentially making sure. Uh, you know, they're able to do that because it's being talked about and how they're able to improve, uh, you know, costs and operating costs uh, and, and make, making that mainstream. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's an excellent point because I think, um, you know, a, a very uh, typical place to start an RPA project is within the finance organization, finance and yep. accounting, because so much of what they do, you know, is, um, is like you said, repetitive, yeah. but also very manual, you know, it's very exactly. labor intensive and very manual and, and gone are the days of those, you know, six month to year long implementations, you know, yeah. RPA yeah. is, is so much faster to implement. That's right. That's right. I mean, those, uh, those times then, you know, I, I, I remember I have implemented an RPA one single process in nine months, right? I mean, that it was that crazy, like getting yeah. hardware allocated, explaining 500 people what you're doing <laughs> and, and stuff. Now it's become, uh, you know, people have are now aware what it is. They have the, the basic understanding, the infrastructure, people are moving processes uh, at a much, much, much higher, pro, uh, you know, uh, rate. So that's actually a good thing. And, and I think that's exactly why, you know, we thought it was the right time to bring in uh, something like open box. Yeah, so let's talk about that. So Gartner Peer Insights lists 20 plus RPA software vendors, right, on the market. Um, we're seeing a trend by enterprise yep. software companies um, incorporating intelligent automation into the products. You know, Microsoft is is getting big into this space now. So why did you decide this was the right time to go to market with OpenBots? And, and what really differentiates your software from others that are already on the market? So, you know, when we started with uh, OpenBots, we thought, it, you know, we will be able to implement these services really easily. And this was a good business model that we go around implementing uh, RPA for large companies that, you know, by the hundreds, <laughs> uh, you know, at least that's what we, you know, dreamed of. And when, once, uh, you know, we were, and earlier we were doing only high ROI uh, processes. So it yeah. looked like this would never end and, and <laughs> this can go on and we will, uh, you know, we'll, we'll keep making money and, and uh, you know, uh, this company will become huge just by doing that. Uh, but the first thing we saw, you know, was uh, that there is a clear lack of understanding of how the ROI works, right? Uh, you know, if you see all the projects that we do, they are still the top, you know, a small percentage of what processes can be automated. Mm -hmm. Uh, everybody struggles with getting the right ROI. And uh, even though the commercial tools have done an amazing job in, in marketing and creating the awareness, you know, I, if I walk into a large organization now, uh, there is already a head of automation or head of RPA. Uh, there's already two people who know how one of the tools, any one of the tools work and things, right? So they have done that uh, as a good job. But on the other side, uh, the, the real disservice is the licensing model, right? Uh, the minute we put in the license numbers, a whole bunch of use cases suddenly don't qualify or do not show up on the radar. Yeah. Uh, and we thought, how do we fix this? And especially being a, you know, at, at that time, a startup, uh, we did not know how to make money off that, right? So we, we saw, you know, open source options. And there were some options that we thought were very good, uh, some options that were horrible, some, some of them were just abandoned. Uh, so we looked at all of them and realized there is not even a single 
good contender at that point of time that could actually take a take on some of the commercial stuff or the features so either they did not have the features or they did not have uh, you know the the right uh, support models and those kind of things and we decided we looked at that and said we will start using python <laughs> and it was not uh, you know it was not going anywhere either right like you did not we couldn't orchestrate we couldn't do unattended stuff very well uh, you know yes we could schedule it somehow and stuff but that was not those were not real solutions if you you know anybody who worked with uh, the commercial rpa tools could come in and and call it bullshit right like, <laughs> this is not how it uh, not how uh, rpa should be it's it was the opposite of programming and now we went back to programming yeah uh, so we we thought we should write uh, something ourselves we looked at the open source market or models all together and we found it very interesting and with the advent of cloud and and other things that have come up uh, ai and cloud and other things and we thought you know uh, why not have a nice open source application uh, which can do all the rpa stuff what people really want we would not have to interfere with day to day uh, you know roi of people and when people want to move to cloud or when people want to do ai when they want to do document understanding and uh, document processing that's when they they could come to us and and we can make money out of that we could definitely make money out of uh, you know hosting services we you know like the wordpress model the application is free but when you want to host it that's when you start paying or you know similar to mongodb and other things so we we decided we're going to be the red hat of rpa right that's that's essentially the thought behind it that's the uh, that's the strategy uh, the strategy looks well uh, we got funded for it uh, you know we are we are absolutely our investors are very excited in terms of uh, where this is actually headed and uh, you know it started like with you know smaller tools and smaller uh, use cases and we were always thinking that we would go with uh, you know small and medium enterprises they are the ones who can't make sense but actually sure. now that we are well into uh, you know our our cycles of sales and and uh, implementations uh, you know i i am surprised that most of our clients are actually large companies uh, you know there are there are billion dollar corporations with all the tools wow. and then uh, <laughs> I, you know i ask myself after these zoom calls about you are a billion dollar company why are you talking to me right uh and then uh it looks like they also struggle with the same roi calculations like they when they open up the excel sheet and they put in the uh, you know license uh fee yeah. <laughs> the number of rows that qualify or come in green is hard, you know very very few uh and they are, they themselves are also looking at at uh, open source so uh you know we thought, we now think that we have hit the right chord uh, you know with the market where there is a need for an option where they can actually uh, improve the number of use cases they can bring to their to the business they can improve uh, you know technology drastically without compromising on capability right yeah so the, it sounds like one of the main benefits between uh you know an open source technology versus a a commercial rpa tool is certainly roi right i mean you have more use cases yeah. that that fit in um because of the lower cost and because you you know you don't have some of the same licensing costs like you do a a commercial rpa tool but what about the support of it i mean is the support of it also you know easier because it is an an open source product it is easier i mean we can drop drop patches and we can do you know uh, prs and and merge requests you know more often than what i you know some of our commercial uh, partners could do or commercial uh, competitors could do uh, we definitely think that the support model uh, you know can is now so much better because it's not only the you know the rpa people who are now being able to communicate with each other and talk about it we have people who are building commands for us you know just out of their own needs uh, you know that are now in the conversation we now have people who want to build features like somebody didn't like uh, you know one of the you know features we had in the recorder so they kind of went ahead and changed it and then later had a call and now we have that feature in the in the tool itself so a lot of this is coming out of the true open sourceness as well so it's way beyond uh yes we are lower in numbers right now in number of people who have who have the adoption and and number of people who use it uh but the the sheer variety of people is going to be much higher so if we get the same time to mature like some of the other tools 
the number of people who understand our tool in and out would be would be way higher sure. supportability makes it easier because hey if if you don't know why something is not working you don't have to wait until a support ticket is opened and somebody answers it right. and those kind of things so you can just go to github and look at how we developed it and say ah this is how it works and you could change it right on the other side we did think that you know not having commercial support or a proper professional support would be an impediment for a lot of organizations to implement this yeah. especially if you are small you don't know how to install servers you don't know how to install some of these things so we did come up with a plan we tried to make sure that it is as low as uh, possible so we have a standard plan and a priority plan for you know priority for somebody who wants to use for this for mission critical things and want you know immediate uh, uh, response times and higher sure. sellies and and standard would be for people who who want to make sure that you know this this stuff doesn't fail i downloaded it off internet would it work you know those kind of questions so so that's why we did land up creating a you know a support plan Sure. And I think that makes a lot of sense. I mean, there are companies, you know, that are going to, they're going to have the people that are able to do it in house. And then there's the other yeah. companies that, you know, like some of your target market, like you were saying is, is smaller in nature. So maybe they don't have that support team um, yeah. that, yeah. you know, that, that they can do it in house. So then they're, you know, they're able to go back to, to your team to be able to provide that, that um, encompassing technology and support. Same with large companies. Like, you know, we, we thought, you know, this was only for small companies and, and things, but that kind of changed very, very fast. Yeah. Uh, you know, when, when we are looking at large organization and especially our support plan is not based on number of bots. So the calculation works out to be so much easier for them. Uh, they're not worried about, uh, you know, how it's going to change in terms of how, when they scale, right? Like just yesterday, I had a call with, with a prospect, large uh, financial services client, and, they, and, and the guy kept asking me, uh, uh, you know, uh, what's the catch? What's the catch? How can it be? <laughs> no, that is the open source model. And that is how, uh, you know, the, uh, these things operate. We don't, we don't want to make revenue off of each install and each uh, individual, uh, you know, uh, process and bot people install and bot people use. We're looking at overall implementations. We want the, the market to grow and we would have a smaller chunk of business out of that it's, it's good enough for us. Like, you know, it, it's either you have the whole cake or you have a much larger <laughs> cake and have a, uh, you know, a larger piece out of it. Right. So I think our, our strategy is we want the industry to go. We want this, uh, you know, the adoption of RPA to increase and we are sure we'll, we'll be able to, uh, you know, have a, pie, a piece of the, <laughs> of the cake for us as well. <laughs> so, so for that company, like the financial services company or, um, you know, other companies that are looking to start their, their RPA programs or expand them, um, yeah. and they're evaluating, you know, various RPA tools, what kind of advice do you, do you give them? And, you know, what would you, what would you say to those that are, um, potentially looking at your tool and others? Yep. Yeah. I think, you know, typically when we go through this evaluation, we've done this a few times now, uh, you know, we are glad that we were put in the same Excel sheet as most of the commercial products now and, and yeah. you know, given ratings and that's how we see most of them comparing and most of them evaluating, uh, you know, the, the uh, you know, the advice or the thought that I have when, when we do that, or we, we really hope that the evaluator uh, looks beyond the marketing, right? So looks beyond uh you know the uh, what the shiny objects mm -hmm. thing, right? right uh and 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 even you know looking at these tools it, it's also about what you really need right how can you get your program off the ground uh and how how are you going to scale these are questions that you need to really ask uh if you're you know if you're being provided with uh, you know options to do uh, you know n number of things are you really going to use that right mm -hmm. you have to ask that Yes, it is nice to be future proof, but then you are forgetting uh, the fact that it's going to cost you for, from get go for to do that. It's also harder to implement. It's also going to get difficult to manage and maintain. And it's not like RPA does not need maintenance and you have just put it yes. on the on, on some machines and it's it's just running. You right. have to constantly manage it and monitor it. Uh, you know, screens change and, and sides change and, yeah. uh, you know, uh, be 
expats of <laughs> of uh, objects change on web pages that like this is our our daily life right so exactly i think cuz i think you're right i think a lot of people think of rpa as set it and forget it technology and it's yeah. not like that you know it, like any software it requires maintenance and care yeah. and feeding in order to continue to make sure everything's working like it's supposed to be exactly exactly and and you know yes we people are able to start off with rpa programs by giving their top 10 business cases right but you think beyond that a little bit right you have to see how it will go beyond that how it's going to go uh, you know it's going to truly affect your organization and and make that uh, you know the the business business cases i have seen majority of the companies that take are only roi based hey if i put in $50,000 in automating this process and, and 50,000 in licenses, you know, am I going to save uh, $200,000, whatever, right? right? So those are Excel sheets, but I, you know, the true value of RPA will start coming in when people have more, uh, you know, uh, more objectives or more business benefits out of RPA. Uh, you know, I have seen insurance companies that are, that are legacy insurance companies, but want to, wanted to use RPA to improve, uh, you know, their business offering. So they started working with insure techs and, and the new fintechs. Uh, and there were there are businesses now possible that were not even possible before RPA. Yeah. Right. Uh, so being able to process certain certain policies in insurance, certain uh, contracts and financial services and other things were not even possible if they were not automated with RPA the way they were. Right. Uh, look at KP so business capabilities need to be added. On the other side, RPA tools you know, businesses can offer RPA as part of their, their own integrations, right? So if you were a large uh, supply chain company, right? And you had customers and you had uh, brokers and other people, you could offer them an RPA uh, environment where they can automate and integrate with your systems. Mm -hmm. So it's not only that you're bringing in this, this value of automation for yourself and only doing your finances and, and you know, uh, Excel sheet automation, but you're actually being able to affect your business partners and overall improving what you're offering to your customers, right? Yeah. So, so RBA needs to now come into that as well. Yeah, so I love that. That's, that's RBA is a service. Exactly, mm -hmm. and and it's not only used as as uh, you know an automation tool, but it's also a business collaboration tool. Yeah, I, I, um, I think some of the most interesting use cases for RPA are where you're thinking outside your traditional spaces and, yeah. you know, you're beginning to leverage it in more, uh, more creative ways. And, and even in some cases, you know, bot to bot technology, you know, it can be customer vendor, um, yeah. where you're, where you're interfacing back and forth and you're really taking the, the manual human out of it at that point and, yeah. um, and having, you know, bot to bot communication. I think there's a lot of interesting, interesting places where it can be leveraged. Absolutely, absolutely. It's just that once once you move ahead of these basic uh, use cases, the yeah. top 20 use cases that you have, that's when you start seeing these things. And that's when it hits you that, you know, this this whole pricing model per bot, uh, you know, a license model is so broken. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and there's no way out. Like, you know, the uh, the deals that I see all the commercial RPA tools are that, that have made with their investors, you know, evaluating them at billions of dollars. I even though I envy that, uh, uh, <laughs> but also the fact that, you know, that, that kind of has made them sign, you know, the deal with the devil because yeah. now they cannot get out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they cannot come back to you and say, Hey, we're going to give you a more, uh, you know, a, a cost, you know, a cost improvement out of what they have. We cannot give you a per transaction model. We can't give you a per uh, bot, you know, per uh, process model or something like that. It, it has to be, the broken model that we have today per bot and, and things. So it, it is going to be the biggest bottleneck that not only individual organization, but the overall industry is going to see. That's the glass ceiling of this industry, I would say. And it sounds like you're here to disrupt it. <laughs> yes, we're ready <laughs> for that. Uh, and I think that that is what we, we think we will change, right? I mean, that's where we will make our mark. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we don't want, uh, you know, again, going back to the, by the strategy, we want the, the industry to grow and us being being able to have a uh, have a piece of that. So uh, that's where we are headed. So, yeah, so it sounds like that's where you see things headed from, you know, from not only your perspective, but also, you know, RPA in general. And I, I yes. think um, I think 2021, it sounds like it's going to be a big year for you. So um, and, and, and open bots for sure. And, uh, you know, open source technology in general. So um, any other any other trends, anything else you see kind of happening in the year ahead? 
Yeah, yeah. I think, uh, you know, two trends that we see other than the open source RPA trend mm -hmm. um, uh, are, are very evident. Uh, you know, the open source trend is happening. We are now uh, seeing people, you know, interested in that, people uh, kind of supporting that. There are people who are now starting to explore that, you know, see, uh, very, very seriously. So that's a good trend. So 2021, definitely we will see a trend where open source has become mainstream. People understand that, you know, beyond uh, Windows, there is also this Linux thing uh, that can be used. So we, we see that open source RPA uh, equivalent coming in. Uh, the other two trends is definitely about moving to cloud. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I think people have have resisted cloud for a long, long time now, uh, and I don't think they have a choice anymore. Right. You know, with with uh, how people have were, it, it it was a clear differentiator for people in these this pandemic times. Right. You saw people who had cloud were able to do things. People who did not have the cloud were not able to do things. Right. Uh, so that that trend would continue. Uh, people don't have a choice anymore. They need to evaluate. They need to look at how uh, cloud and RPA can work together. And that's again one of the drawbacks we see with with commercial tools. Uh, you know, most of them are not cloud ready. They are not right. even close. Uh, some some of them are trying to work towards it, but mm -hmm. but most of them just cannot work in that environment. It's it's a high failure environment. It's it's a more distributed environment. Uh, those are environments that most of these client server based solutions uh, do not work. Uh, so that's the second trend. The third one I would say uh, really would be, uh, you know, a little bit of more machine learning and AI coming mm -hmm. into play, uh, which, which it includes, I would say, uh, you know, document processing. So document processing will definitely in 2021 be, will become mainstream, um, you know, people realize that there is way too much paperwork that they generated yes. <laughs> themselves in, in businesses for everything they landed up creating a document or a form <laughs> and, and uh, that has that is coming back to haunt them and uh, they will they will see uh, document understanding and, and machine learning and, and AI as some of the solutions out because now you are able to do transactions without uh, you know you can throw in calculations in between business processes right and, and yeah. plug them in that you will see AI kind of improving, the use of AI improving. I, I would not uh, think that a lot of people will start suddenly start making deep neural networks and throwing them in business processes, but good statistical machine learning models will start coming in and, and trying to uh, show, you know, what our RPA can bring in. So, you know, if a loan comes in, they, they will definitely be scored and classified before actually a humans can, can actually approve it and underwrite. If an insurance policy comes in or a claim comes in, there will definitely be a fraud score uh, that an RPA would calculate to come up with, uh, with, with an indicator for uh, the adjusters to look at. So those are things that definitely are 2021 trends. Uh, you know, I, I will be surprised and, and quite disappointed if they do, they do not turn out to be correct. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think um, I think what you said makes a lot of sense. I mean, we're certainly seeing a, a big shift to cloud technology, like you said, and um, you know, more and more, more and more vendors are moving that way, and more customers are moving that way too. Um, but like you said, the technology really needs to to keep up, right? And um, the software needs to keep up with with moving to the cloud. So. Um, and, and of course, you know, my, my favorite thing about the past year has been the elimination of so much paper. Um, yeah. And I think, you know, like you said, I think people travel, are really- Travel, it, you say travel. <laughs> paper and travel. That's true. Yes, that's true. Tra paper and travel. There's been a, a big reduction in both of those things this past year. So, yeah. um, you know, I hope travel comes back. I'm less, <laughs> uh, less inclined to, to bring back paper. Um, but, you know, I do think you're right. I think that people have realized how much one how much paper they were you know using and two how many forms and how many yeah, documents yeah. and all of these things that needed to be processed and processed quickly correct, um correct. you know we, we've really seen that um with health insurance and and test results and and reporting and all of that over the past year so um i think you're right i think we're only going to see you know that get even faster and, and more sophisticated over the course of of the next year and beyond that's right that's right and uh you know, we we think you and I will see really good things happening to RPA this year. 
I think so too. So Ashish, thank you. This has been a great conversation. Like I said, I know this is a passion of mine and a passion of yours. And um, this has been a, a really fun conversation to have. And and I, I think we're going to have to revisit it either later this year or next year, because, um, you know, big things are going to happen um, over the course of next year, not just for our PA technology, but for, for open bots and yourself as well. We'll see how my predictions come through. And we, I love if, it. If they do, I'll move into astrology or something. <laughs> Get a whole new, whole new career <laughs> opening up. Smart. <laughs> if you are a Virgo, your RPAs will work well this year. <laughs> I love it. Ashish, thank you so much for being on the Ivy podcast. Thank you. thank you so much for having me. All the best for me. Thank you.